Do you want to know how to set up your Logitech Direct Drive G Pro wheel on Gran Turismo and PS5? If so, hopefully this video is going to help you. I'm going to run through all of the settings that I have that I've been using for a year on Gran Turismo with this wheel. Before I start, remember Logitech did provide me for this wheel for free over a year ago, but they might well have forgotten they've given it to me. They haven't seen this video, they don't know that I'm going to make it. I'm just going to go through. I don't pretend to be a super expert either, but anyway. Here we have the, um, the, the six sort of... Uh, meters you can see in the default mode. I just want to explain how they work. So you have this for gas. You can see gas. That's the G1. And that also works with the rev lights there as well. And you have the B for brake. Now because my load cell pedal is quite stiff, it's quite difficult for me to get 100%. You can actually feel the plate itself starting to move around before it gets to 100%. So I need to bolt that down. The C is for clutch, but I don't use a clutch. So I took it off. Um, the H, I presume, is for handbrake. And AA and AB, I actually have no idea what they mean, but they've never meant anything to me and I haven't missed out by not knowing. So let's go into the actual settings itself. So you press this little button here and you go into the settings. Now I set this up with Nathan Maximum um, over a year ago and I haven't re really returned to it since. It's just been absolutely fine since how I set it up. But Hopefully this is interesting if you are looking at this wheel or thinking about to get this wheel. I should disclose as well that I also have a discount code for this wheel. If you use Kirith, I think you get £50 off it, just so you know. Right, here we go. So, strength. I actually run Gran Turismo at 9 newton meters, even though it's 11 newton meter wheel. At the beginning I was running it at 11, and you can see the videos and it's kind of tough. So I've gone down to 9. I used to run it at 8, but I just sort of bumped it up to find my sweet spot. So for me, 9 newton meters is my sweet spot. You can just um, adjust it here by scrolling this thing. So very easy to do. Now we come on to TrueForce Audio. So TrueForce Audio at the moment I've got on zero because otherwise it would be shaking. But this is a real personal preference thing. Now most people say you don't want to have this up at 100, it's just sort of silly. So I'm already getting a lot of vibrations through for the rig now. And for a video like this, you'd probably hear it in the microphone. This is something you just got to do for personal preference. But I mean, this is like the rumble. I don't want to move the camera. That's looking at the thing. This is like the rumble you get on your um, joypad, basically. So it's rumbling through the wheel. This is the True Force audio. That's at one hundred percent. So if you don't want to feel anything like that at all, <laughs> you can obviously put it all the way down to zero. I'm going to put it here at thirty because I like to run it at lower settings. So something like 30, oh, when you go over the curbs, it just gives you, I don't know if you can hear that, I'm going to be quiet. Can you hear that? I'm going to go over some curbs again in a, in a high gear so the car's quiet, it's an electric car. Don't know if you can hear that little buzz. Do it once more time. See that? And now if I put it to zero, you don't get that at all. So I want to I want to do it one more time just to explain. So I don't think anyone's ever made a true force video that sort of makes sense. So at the moment with zero, when I go over this curb, nothing. Now you can hear the game is doing it, but the wheel isn't. Now if I go up to a hundred percent and go over the curb, ready? Can you hear that? So that is true force. I don't because I'm a streamer, I don't run this at max because it would go into the microphone and I have to change my gating or something. But if you want to feel the curbs, make sure you have your true force audio on so you're feeling it basically. Uh, force feedback filter I have on 11. I've never changed it, but again this video I'm just showing you kind of what I have. That's on 11. Dampener I have off. If you look to my Forza videos, you see I learned a lot about dampeners in here. We just have it off on the direct drive. Angle here, I have 530. So it would be 540, so I have quite a tight angle, but I'm not sure in Gran Turismo it makes that much difference. But let's find out. Um, so this is my, if we can, this is my um, Peugeot RC Dead. So I drive this car in real life, I should say, as well. So I should know a little bit about the, dry, the angles. So you can see what I'm doing on the wheel there. Now if we put this up, all the way to 1080. You 
I can't really notice any different. I think I think in Gran Turismo it just it's one of these ones where it locks it. I think in ACC and iRacing. So for me, I'm getting the exact same experience here. I think I might be getting less false feedback though. Back down to 540. To me, that's it's definitely not as big as it should be if it was making a difference. So for me, I've just kept it at 540, but that's because of what I use for um, ACC. Brake force this is an absolutely critical one if you've got the load cell pedals. My brake force is at 38. This has to be in combination with the... Let me put the handbrake on. Has to be in combination with the uh, the actual springs, the elastometer, sorry, you put in the brake pedals. And it's a real sweet spot. Definitely make sure you're tweaking this. So I don't... I want to feel the pressure at about 80%. So where I want you to look at the screen right now, dear viewers, is the brake indicator on the left. I want to feel this bit like that. That's what I want to feel. I want to be super precise here. I want to be super precise all the way up, but definitely here. So if I know that I need to break 80%, I can use my pressure, and that's the real benefit of the load cell. So really, really, really make sure you're playing around with that. Don't get into a situation where you're trying to be too hard, like, oh, I'm going to be a big, strong man on my load cell, and you're not actually reaching 100%. Trust me, I've been there. I've learnt my lesson, so that's what I have on that. Uh, L paddle, these are the clutch paddles, so you get a clutch paddle, I never use them. I guess I could use this as a... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I could use this as an axis. And then surely I could look left. Oh, this that's what A and A, B are as well. I'm learning with you! Hang on, I thought I could use these... ...as an axis and look around the car. But I can't. <laughs> I used to, I'm sure I used to have these set up so I could look left and right, actually. Do I need to go, maybe? Nope. Anyway, you can see that they're working, you can see the thing. Now, in all seriousness, I've had a lot of questions from some of my disabled viewers who always ask me, what can I do if I'm disabled? They ask me a lot of questions about rigs and everything. So you can map that to gas and brake. So I'm going to show you now... This is if you're not able to use legs or feet to to drive. Which one do I want? I'm going to do brake on the left. I'm going to do gas on the right. And now I'm driving the car with no no legs. Remember when Michael Schumacher broke his leg at Silverstone? I think he did something like this, didn't he? So definitely usable, hundred percent. If if you if Honestly, if if one person watches this who who has a I, I don't know if disability is the right word, but it's not able to sim race using their legs, and this helps them, I'll be very 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 happy. So I'm going to get rid of that now because I don't want to accidentally touch that and then break in the middle of a corner. So I'm going to put them on the axes, um, whatever they are, and then clutch bite point isn't relevant because I'm not using a clutch for me. RPM mode, outside in, this is how the lights work, so I think it's only, ah, outside in, oh, hang on, I would prefer left to right. Yes, give me left to right, like old school, I think. It's not as aesthetically pleasing. That, for me, gives you more granularity, because when you have outside in, you're only getting, you're only getting half the information. That makes sense, right? You're only getting half the information, I think. So... Okay, so I'm going to change that. So that's what they do. Um, brightness, I've got any, any electronics. I just whack the brightness up like only the once. Um, home screen, you can change. Dynamic test, profile, talk. Let's put it on talk. Ooh! Have you ever seen the review? Where you've had a live talk meter. This is what I mean when sim racing. I don't pretend to be a, a reviewer, but look at this. Let me know if you can actually. I'm going to turn here so you won't be able to see. But then there's a little straight. Here we go. Can you see that? That's your talk. So you, when I'm turning, obviously that's when the talk kicks in. Um, so. You've got an average torque. 
This is one of the most interesting videos I've ever done. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, I, I've got, I will have nothing else to offer you. That's very interesting. But, for me, I like to know whether I'm resting on the pedals. That is a big thing, and especially when I'm coaching, that's a big thing. But let's have a look at other ones. You've got torque, you've got dynamic. What's dynamic? I think that's dynamic, so... You also have a wheel indicator, which you can't see when I'm turning, but there's a little thing at the top that shows you when the wheel is turning. So I keep it on that just so I can see my pedals, and I test them before the race that the pedals are working, and stuff like that, so... But that's interesting, got this stuff on the home screen. Compatibility, there's a G923 mode, which I don't want to do. Um, and then platform, you can choose your platforms here, so PS5, PS4, PC. I let it ask me on startup because I use it between a PS5 and a PC. That's quite unusual because I'm a content creator, so you could just have it so it automatically just starts up on your platform. I don't mind it. And I'll show you actually how it starts up as well. So, home screen. Yeah, so let me show you how it actually starts up. And then you can save profiles as well. So I'm going to turn it off now. Okay. And I'll take off the quick release. So... This is the wheel. I don't know which camera I should be looking at. This is the wheel. That's the quick release there. Which... Just factually has not gone wrong for me. So... This is unscripted. So I put it in. I just touched the... I uh, moved the chair there. Hopefully it's still looking at the centre. Doesn't matter really. And... Turn on... The wheel. And now I select my platform. Just checks it's sort of in the middle. Breeze a little bit. Get the Logitech logo. Now I can check my pedals. You can see. Check my pedals. And now when I press the PlayStation button... It's now connected. And we're good to go. So, hopefully that helps anyone thinking about the Logitech G Pro, or if you've got it. If you do want to get it, remember you can get it cheaper by using my code Kirith. Go to logi.gg forward slash Kirith, but you don't need to. Um, bear in mind I got this wheel for free as well. But yeah, there we go. Very excited to do this video. I know a lot of you have been asking, so let me know what you think in the comments. Put your own settings maybe, and I will see you. Actually, check out these other videos here on the G Pro, or other wheels I've done, and I'll see you next time.